Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm excited to welcome you back to our Extra and Speed Live session as we're going to be taking another fresh new look at the financial market. But before we begin, let's go through our daily routine by confirming that we are good to go this morning. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please type in hi in the comment section and let's get this session started. So I would like to see some feedbacks in the comment section, please. Let's confirm that we are good to go. If you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know right in the comment section. So I think I see, I can see some comments here. Um, 269426. Hauta 2K2. Um, 8116, good morning to you, thank you very much. 604, good morning to you. Um, Pon Car Kill, 234, thank you very much, good morning to you. 439, good morning. Hello, Carrie, good morning, how are you doing today? And glad to have you around with us, and thank you very much for that confirmation. All right, I think I will take this feedbacks as a positive one so on this note i welcome you all once again to yet another promising edition on the extra speed live my own name is sharif daramola and for the next one hour i'm going to be your host where we shall be diving into the financial market using simple parameters such as trend lines key levels and chart patterns to navigate through the current structure with the utmost intents of identifying potential trading opportunities ahead of the new york session today well for those who are joining us for the first time you are highly welcome on board and you might be asking what is it that we are doing here well, as technical traders, we gather here as a community on a daily basis in anticipation of the New York session where we come to review our existing position if we have any. And while we use the information we have on the charts to strategically position ourselves ahead of the New York session. So we do this on a daily basis, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time. And in fact, I encourage you to stay tuned in so you don't miss out on all of the insightful and interesting ideas we will be deliberating on the charts today. I also encourage you to be part of our subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us here, the better you get in understanding how this works and eventually be able to use the information you gather in this community to make your own independent trading decisions so once again you are highly welcome on board with that being said here let's dive right into the business and as usual the first thing we normally do is to keep tabs with the fundamental aspect of the market by checking on the economic calendar well we all know that these fundamental factors often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movement by monitoring the economic calendar, we can easily identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information and timing to position ourselves strategically prior, during, and even after this event. So on the economic calendar, we normally focus on high impact event, and for this week, we are going to be looking at economic events from the United Kingdom and the United States, since these are the assets that these are the economies that are affecting the assets on our watch list. So, on the economic calendar for today, October 5, Thursday, um, there are no high impact events for today, so I went further to include the medium impact event. And on the medium impact event, we have some series of events coming in from the United States. Then the first one we have here is the Challenger Job Cuts. And this is released by the Challenger Gray and Christmas. 
It's a monthly index that provides us information on the number of announced corporate layoffs by industries and regions. The report is an indicator used by investors to determine the strength of the labor market. Now, the previous data for the previous month came in at 75,151, and we are looking forward to see what the actual data will be, though we do not have any consensus yet to, to gauge what um, the actual data is going to be. But one thing for sure here is we want to know if the data will be just as expected, below expectation, or beyond expectations. Then going on, about um, two hours from now, we have the initial jobless claims. Well, this is um, another data that gives us an insight into the health situation of the labor market of the United States. And it publishes the number of previous week's initial claims for employment, which in the long run measures the number of people filing for first-time claims for the state unemployment insurances. A larger than expected number indicates weakness in this market, which influences the strength and direction of the U.S. economy. Now, the previous data here came in at 204,000, and we have economists projecting 210,000, which is a sign that um, a majority are expecting a contraction in that sector. So a higher figure here is going to be considered as negative for the US dollar. So we will be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be like on that one. Then besides this event here, we have some couple of speeches here from Fed officials. Um, we have Mest Loretta Mesta, who is the president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland branch. So she is going to be having a speech in about three hours from now. So we want to be looking forward to what she's going to be saying. Then we also have another speech here from um, Barkins. Well, Barkins is the eighth president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. He's also going to be having a speech. Then I think we have one more speech again later today in about six to seven hours from now. And that is Mary Daly who is the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank head. So she's going to also be giving a speech later today. And in fact, everyone in the market will be looking forward to the speeches as this will give us an insight into the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve and also will give us an insight into the um, central bank's outlook on the economy, potential policy shifts and potential interest rate changes hereby impacting trading decisions and market sentiment. So with the information we have gathered here from the economic calendar, let's dive right into the chart and let's look at things from a technical standpoint. Now, the first asset we are going to be looking at today, as usual, is going to be the U.S. All Sports. And on the U.S. All Sport, we have been doing pretty well since the beginning of this week as you will see here we have been selling this asset as we um, despite the the drop in stockpiles in the US um, then also we had yesterday that the Russia and um, Saudi Arabia are planning to cut oil production further till the end of this year and despite this um, information we still see there price of oil continues to nose dive now let's run through how the week started for us in this community and what led into the idea of selling this asset this week now let's rewind back to the beginning of the week now zoom right in so that we can see things clearly here now at the beginning of the week it was more of an indecisive phase as you will see here that price action was initially con confined within a range that is between the $90.40 level and the $89.80 level to emphasize the level of indecision at that point in time.
And of course, you know how we do it in this community. Whenever we have an uncertainty in the market like this and price transitions into a flat channel, we do want to be exercising patience, waiting for a signal to come either in the form of a breakout of the resistant line of that range or the breakdown of the support line of that range for trading opportunities. Though proud to our live session on Monday, I told us all that I had a buy position triggered after the breakout of that resistant line, which of course price moved about 50 pips before the bearish momentum began taking me out of that buy position and what happened was an interesting breakdown retest of both the key level and the support line of that range to insight our first sell position for the week. Then we went on to ride that momentum all the way to the downside as you will see here and in fact during our live session yesterday we acknowledged that we are going to be adding more sell positions if price action goes on to break down the $87 area. And if you look at this closely and sum up all these positions here, we have roughly a thousand pips running in profit right now from two positions from our deliberations yesterday. And for those who took advantage of this opportunity, well done, well done, and kudos to you for being on standby to capitalize on this move. And in fact, um, since yesterday's trading session, if you are taking advantage of that breakdown of the $87 area, we saw our price had moved over 400 pips in the last 24 hours. So it has been quite an interesting week for everyone in this community. And once again, I congratulate you all for being on standby to capitalize on this move. Now, the next thing we want to be doing as usual is to ensure that we secure our current position. So if you still have a sell position running on the U.S. all spot, I would encourage you to move all stop losses. Let's secure this current sell position while we look out for more opportunities. And if you still have a sell position, where do we want to be having our stop loss placed? I will be suggesting that anywhere above the $83.50 level, and the $84.50 area seems most appropriate. Remember that we do want to be given enough room for price action to break just in case we have some retracements before the bearish trend continues to the downside. So with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action? Are we going to continue selling the U.S. all spot today or are there chances that buyers could come in at any point in time to incite an uptrend move? Now, for us to have a better idea of what is going on here, it is important that we take an holistic look at what is going on in this market. And to do that, we would like to scale up into the higher time frame and in fact, refresh our memories on what we saw here at the beginning of this week now at the beginning of the week this is what we saw here and um, we took into consideration the nature of price action since the month of june and of course it's quite clear that the market has been on a strong bullish momentum as you will see here and to emphasize the strength of the buyers we connected the series of higher lows giving us a major ascending trend line to guide our trading decision for the week now if we fast forward into what is going on right now you will see that the trend line has been broken to the downside which further incites the idea that sellers are getting momentum and giving us a momentum shift at this point in time now, how do we intend to capitalize on any potential opportunity here? Well, for me at this juncture, we will continue to ride the downtrend move. And then if even if we cite a bullish opportunity like buy pressure at any point in time, it could turn out to be the retracement of this impulse leg back into this red trend line to incite a downtrend move. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the week, we acknowledged the descending trend line and it was as a result of the consistent lower highs since price action tested that $94 level. And after we connected that series of lower highs, we had this trend line. And in fact, this trend line has been supporting 
our bearish bias since the beginning of this week. So even if we see buy pressure coming here, I'm of the opinion that it could turn out to be a retracement of that impulsive move where price could incite some more selling pressure to the downside. So at this point in time, as long as price still remains below that descending trend line, that is the red alighted trend line, will continue to hold on to a bearish bias and look out for more selling opportunities here. Now let's scale back down into the one hour time frame and let's look at things from the lower time frame's perspective. Now, with the way situation are going right now, this is what I saw this morning while I was trying to dissect the current market structure. I saw this consolidation phase here between the $83.80 level and the $83.10 area. And of course, you know how we do it. We want to wait for a breakdown or breakout of that range to give us an opportunity to sell. And as a result of this, I had my sell stop order below the $83.10 level to capitalize on this bearish move and for those who took advantage of this one too well done to you but if you had missed out on this one well let's hold on and see what will happen today uh, from a technical standpoint whenever we have a breakdown of a support line like this we expect at some point in time price may come back retest the structure that was broken to incite a downtrend scenario now let's see if the market will come back into that structure to retest it and inside that downtrend continuation if it does then um, we will be excited to add more sell positions to our existing trade but if this does not happen and price continues to nose dive to the downside well then i will suggest that we'll we allow the trade to pass and wait for new setups to mature. So at this point in time, we still hold on to our bearish buyers. Those who still have a sell position running, kindly move your stop losses, secure your current sell position, and let's see what happens from here. And one of the things we are looking out for is a potential retest of the $83.10 level. Let's see if that will happen. If it does, then we'll be part of that bearish move. But if it doesn't, then let's hold on and allow this bearish momentum to run through. These are my views here on the US All Spot for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions. And you can as well use that time to mark out these levels on your chat as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions. All right, so in the absence of no questions, I want to assume we are all on the same page. So permit me to move on to the next asset on our watch list. I see your comment, Mr. Vane. Good morning to you. Murphy G, good morning to you. FCBL, FCB1984, good morning. It's 6514438, good morning. Lamry, good morning to you. Glad to have you guys around with us this morning. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. But if you still have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. So I will be moving right into the next financial asset on our watch list. <music> So 
so the next asset on our watch list for today is the us tech 100 popularly known as the nasdaq and in fact we've been doing very very well since the beginning of this week as we have roller coasters of buys and sells and another buy and in all instances price had moved significantly well in our favor now before we go into the details let's run through how the week started for us here in this community and what led to the decisions we made from a technical standpoint now the first thing that happened at the beginning of this week was this consolidation phase where we saw price confined within the 14,860 and the 14,785 and of course we know what we do whenever we have this kind of indecisive phase we exercise patience waiting for either the breakout of the resistant line or the breakdown of the support line for an opportunity to either buy or sell but most of the time most of the first hours of the week it was more of sellers trying to make a statement in this market as most of the time we have been citing the breakdown of the support line of that range at around the 14,785. We had a couple of sell positions initially at the beginning of the week and most instance it was it didn't really move that far as you saw here the first one moved about um, 99 pips the other one moved about um, 60 pips before it came back into our entry zone and on tuesday's trading session we agreed here that um, this trend line remember we had this ascending trend line identified at the beginning of the week and we said if this trend line is broken to the downside we will be looking out for selling opportunities and interestingly that trend line shares a confluence with that support line had the 14,785. So right here on Tuesday, we had the breakdown of the structure happen, both the trend line and the support line of that range. And in fact, if you had missed out on that opportunity, the market was kind enough to give us an opportunity to join as it came back to retest the structure to inside that downtrend move. So as a Tuesday trading session, we were about um let's see how many pips was this we saw price move over 300 pips in our favor and remember that we also had more positions at the breakdown of the 14,680 and the 14,550 to maximize the bearish momentum now during our live session yesterday we were able to sort out a trend line that we said we were going to be using to guide our trading decisions for yesterday and that is this descending trend line so after connecting the series of lower highs we had those trend lines marked out in fact we had a couple of them here and we agreed that as long as price remains below that descending trend line we shall feel comfortable in our sell positions while we look out for more selling opportunities only if price breaks down that 14,450 level here. But unfortunately for the sellers, this never happened as we saw the buy pressure continue here, leading into a scenario where we notice the breakout, retest of both the descending trend lines and our key level for the week which was situated at the 14,550 area and this triggered our first buy position for the week as we took advantage of this momentum here and remember yesterday I made mention that if price goes on to break out of the 14,000 $680 level we will be adding more positions to our existing trade and if it does goes on to break out retest the 14,785 we will be adding more positions to maximize the potential of that bullish move and for those if you had missed out on the breakout of the 14,680 we can see here that the market came back to retest structure to inside that uptrend move so for those who took advantage of this buy opportunity too as well, well done to you for being on standby to capitalize on that move.
So if you're still in the buy position, for the first position here, you will currently be running with over 200 pips in profit. And if you are taking advantage of the second one here, you will currently be running with about 90 pips, giving us a total of 290 pips. And if you had bought around this area, you will currently have a loss of about 27 pips. So at this point in time, we have over 200 pips in our kitty right now. So well done to you for being on standby to capitalize on this opportunity. Now, the next thing we are going to be doing right now, as usual, is to secure all our buy position at this juncture as we continue to look out for buying opportunity um, in this particular market. And from the look of this current structure, I will be suggesting that anywhere around the 14,720 and the 14,680 seems most appropriate to secure all buy positions in this particular market. Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action for today? Are we going to continue buying or are we likely going to be seeing some bearish momentum come in? Now, before we go into that detail, we want to take an holistic perspective into what is really going on in this market. And to do that, we will need to scale up into the higher time frame. Now, for those who missed out on our sessions at the beginning of the week, this is an opportunity for you to be part of, to be part of um, the idea we shared at the beginning of the week. So what we noticed on the daily time frame is that price has been on a strong bullish momentum since the beginning of this year. And if you look at it closely, we had a series of higher lows. And when we connected the series of higher lows here, we had an ascending trend line to work with. Now, this trend line has been holding on this bullish momentum not until a couple of weeks ago that we saw price break down that ascending trend line for the first time this year. And of course, such breakdowns are, are always um, a source for concern for the buyers as sellers might likely be trying to change the momentum of price action in this point. Now, one in, besides the ascending trend line, one other level was identified at the beginning of the week, which we agreed that we are going to be using it as our key level for this week. And that is the 14,550 area. You see this level here had played a major role in determining the direction of price action since the month of June of this year. Now, if you look at this structure closely, you will see that since the month of June, where price broke above this level, you will see that sellers have found it difficult to drop below this area. Now, look at what happened here in the month of June. We saw that price was, wasn't find it difficult to come close to that area. And even when it got close to this level in the month of August, we saw our buy pressure resumed around that area. Now, in the last couple of weeks, despite the breakdown of that ascending trend line here, you will see that price action has come back into the 14,550 and throughout the course of the course of the last two weeks, sellers have found it difficult to break through that area. So every time price comes into this key level, we always see buy pressure resume around this area. And this is peculiar with what has been happening in the last couple of weeks. Now, yesterday, in the last two days now, despite the strong bearish engulfing candle we saw here, we saw that as soon as price got into the 14,550, we saw another buy pressure resume around this area. Now, you would agree with me that this level is a crucial moment in this market, and whatever happens here will determine what our next line of action will be. Now, with the way things are going right now, it appears that price action is gradually transitioning into a reversal pattern in the form of a double bottom structure. Now, if whenever we start noticing something like a double bottom structure like this, the next thing we want to be doing is to project a neckline that we will be using to validate this reversal pattern. And to do that, we want to be bringing out our line charts, connect the neckline, which interestingly falls along the 14,850 level. 
So let's mark out this level here on our chart. Hold on a second, 14,850. So you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart as this will be our neckline for this potential reversal pattern. So this reversal pattern is not yet validated yet unless the breakout of this neckline happens, then can we be sure that the bullish momentum will continue for the later part of this week. Now, with the way things are going right now, let's take a moment to look at the breakdown of that ascending trend line here. Now, we saw the impulsive move that broke down the structure, and you all know that from a technical standpoint, when price breaks down on the structure, we expect that some point in time price is likely going to come back and retest that structure. So, with the idea that the retest of the structure is going to be happening, and considering the fact that we are seeing something like a reversal pattern, everything is lining up for an uptrend move. And if we look at the distance between this neckline and that trend line that was broken, we have over 500 pips to catch if price moves significantly in that direction. So today I'm, I will be holding on to a bullish bias where I will be waiting for another breakout of the 14,850 to add more buy position to my existing trade on this one. Now, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunity, we still cannot ignore the potentials of sellers. And for us to sell from this structure, I would rather want to see price take out this 14,550, a level which has been a strength for buyers in the last three to four months. Now, a breakdown retest of the 14,550 will be all we need to capitalize on a downtrend move. But if this does not happen, I want to hold on and maintain the bullish buyers in this market. Now, going down into a much more lower time frame, I think we went down to the four hours time frame where I also buttressed the importance of, of this demand zone around that 14,550. So let's zoom right in so we can see things more clearly here. Now, remember, we saw this demand zone at the beginning of the week, just right around our key level. And since the beginning of the week, price has remained above that structure. So it makes quite a lot of sense that we maintain a bullish bias here, where we look out for more buying opportunities at the breakout of the 14,800, 14,850 to capitalize on an uptrend continuation. So let's see how the market will play out today. So our center of focus is around is between the 14,850 and the 14,550 area. So if we are going to be buying more today, that is adding more buy position to our existing trade, we want to be seeing a breakout of both the 14,800 and the 14,850 to capitalize on that uptrend move. And the only condition that will make us want to sell the US Tech 100 today is for price to drop below taking out all the buy positions along the 14,500, 14,550 zone before we can start considering selling. So let's mark these levels out on our chart and, um, and let's use it as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions for today. So these are my views here on the US Tech 100. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions while you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today.
All right, all right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. I see your comment. Um, what's that number again here? I saw um, 12050907. You are very much welcome. You say you are new with us. Glad to have you around. And I encourage you to be part of the... Stay tuned into the end of the session and be part of the subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us here, the better you get in understanding how this works and eventually be able to use the information you gather here to make your own independent trading decision. So once again, you are welcome 907. So with that being said here, let's move right into the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the GBP USD and we've been doing very well since the beginning of the week on the GBP USD but it's just that um, we've been having some some indecisive decision indecisive phase going on in the last 24 36 hours in this particular market. Now on the pound sterling we saw how the pound sterling yesterday attracted some buying opportunities benefiting from a correction in the US dollar which was incited by a weaker than expected US ADP employment change data and additionally we had a robust rebound in the UK services PMI data which further boasted the GBP USD giving us some buying opportunities to take advantage of. Let's take some technical perspective into this and let's see why the market is behaving in such manner now um let's go to yet the beginning of the week let's see what really happened which led to the decisions we made this week so at the beginning of the week we saw this range here where price was confined within the 1.22080 and the 1.21760 giving us an uncertain situation there and of course we waited for the breakout or breakdown of that ring to give us an opportunity to trade we saw the breakdown happen we brought we sold and since then we were selling and for those who missed out on the breakdown of the 1.21760 on monday i mentioned that we have two options where we want to wait for price coming back to retest structure to join that decline or we wait for the breakdown retest of the 1.212 to join that decline to the downside so we had price move all the way into the 1.20600 area where we begin to notice an, a consolidation phase here. So for like 24, 36 hours that was during our live session yesterday, we noticed that price had been confined within this range, which further emphasized the level of indecision at that point. And I also went on to highlight the significance of the support line here at the 1.20600 area where i said that despite the strong bearish momentum in this market we have found out that that 1.20600 area had become a major barrier for sellers as we saw sellers struggle to break through that area and in turn this was a sign that buyers are gradually gaining some momentum here and the likelihood of the breakout of the descending trend line became very visible. Remember, we had this trend line here yesterday. In fact, we had a couple of them. We had one right here, which has been supporting the bearish momentum since the beginning of this week. We had the second one right here. And with the continued buy pressure around the 1.20600 area, we were of the opinion that it is very likely that this trend line will be broken yesterday and in anticipation of this breakout we said we will be looking out to buy had the breakout of the resistant line of this range which is situated at the 1.2100 area and of course you saw what happened here yesterday we saw how price broke out of that structure and in fact it moved about how many pips was that moved about 65 pips before this bearish momentum began 
And we also thought of adding more positions. Remember, we had this level marked out, 1.212 which was marked out yesterday to add more position. And if you had done that, you, you must have taken advantage of two positions. And if you had moved your stop losses accordingly, you must have been taken out of all position. And if you are still in a buy position right now, I will be advising you to move your stop losses and secure the current positions. And to secure your position at this point, anywhere below the 1.212, and the 1.21 area seems most appropriate at this point in time. Now, with a well-secured position for today's trading session, what is going to be our plans for today? Well, if you look at the structure closely, you will see that um, price has broken out of these trend lines here. And from a technical standpoint, we still expect that price may likely come back to retest the structure where the appearance of buy pressure will be all we need to confirm an uptrend continuation. However, there is something interesting about the structure on a much more higher time frame that will lead us to be very cautious about taking any jumping into any decision right away without any confirmations at all. Now, when we scale up into the four hours time frame, you recall that we identified a descending channel on this chart at the beginning of the week, which has been supporting the bearish momentum throughout the course of last month's trading session. Now, if you look at the structure closely um, on the four hours time frame, you will see that um, we have a descending channel. So after connecting the series of lower high, sorry, lower lows, we have the support line of that descending channel and connecting the series of lower highs, we have the resistant line of that descending channel. So we have a, a strategic structure here to guide our trading decisions. Now, if we zoom into what happened here during the New York session yesterday, you will see that as soon as price came into the 1.218, which interestingly shares a confluence with the resistant line of that descending channel, we saw selling pressure resume around that area. And within this resumption of selling pressure, we saw our price transitioned into lower highs which gradually incites the idea that sellers might likely be taking over this market. So at this point here we have something that looks like a double top structure which from a technical standpoint is a strong reversal pattern. And whenever we identify a reversal pattern, especially around the resistant line of a descending channel like this, the next thing we want to be doing is to see how we can capitalize on that move. And to do that, we will need a neckline to validate that reversal pattern. And what I did this morning was to mark out the 1.21350, which happens to be the neckline of this potential reversal pattern. And price appeared to have broken down that neckline and then we are going through something that looks more like a potential retest of the neckline to incite the downtrend continuation. Now this is where things get a little bit ambiguous with this current structure. Now if we look at the support line of this descending channel here, hold on a second, let me so if you look at the support line of this descending channel right here, you will see that um, sellers were finding it difficult to even come close to the support line here. Unlike the previous touch of the support lines you see here, you see how sellers drop in before buy pressure resume. But in this case scenario yesterday, I think since Tuesday, we saw how sellers struggled to stay close to the support line. So at this point, and in addition, looking at the nature of the, of the, weeks of those candles there you will see that we had sharp rejection of that area so sellers who are finding it difficult to settle into that area and this for me is a sign that buyers are gradually gaining momentum behind the scenes here now despite the fact that price is respecting the resistant line here pushing some selling pressure here we cannot ignore the potentials of buyers so in as much as we will be looking out for selling opportunities below the 1.21350 here we cannot ignore the potentials of buyers breaking out of the 1.218 to incite an uptrend scenario
So what we are going to be doing here right now is to exercise some patience and see how we would like to take advantage of this move. Now with the breakdown of the 1.21350 happen, let's see how this current candle will close. This candle is still about 2 hours old and still has about 2 hours 8 minutes to close. So let's see if we will see continuous selling pressure below the structure where we see signs that buyers are finding it difficult to climb above and stay above the 1.21350, then we could join a bearish move. And please note that if we are selling here, we want to ensure we move our stop losses accordingly, secure the positions as this buy pressure we notice around this 1.20600 area for me doesn't make me feel comfortable staying very long in that sell, sell position and unless we have the breakdown of the 1.2060 to the downside can we feel very comfortable selling the GBP USD now in this case scenario please note that we are not ignoring the potentials of buyers now look at the descending Look at the resistant line of that descending channel right here, which is right here. So I would want to see a breakout of this trend line happen. If a breakout happens, then retest of structure will confirm the uptrend move. So our center of focus for today's trading session is basically between the 1.210800 area and the 1.21350, where depending on what happens here will determine what our next line of action would be for today so let's remain patient let's see how let's wait and see how the market will react to the zone it could take about two to three hours before something significant happens here so let's exercise patience let's allow the structure to mature before we jump into a position now remember we are only selling below the 1.21350 and we are only buying when if price breaks out of both the resistant line of that range and this descending trend line of which is the resistant line of that descending channel so let's see what happens here and um, if you allow your structures to mature trust me you will be you will be part of a profitable trade so you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart right now as we continue to monitor price action in this area so let's see what happens going forward. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions before I move on to the next financial asset on our watch list. Then you can also use that time to draw out these levels on your charts as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your trading decisions for today. You're welcome, 1205907. I'm always glad to have newcomers in the house. So, all right. So, in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. So, permit me to move right into the last financial asset on our watch list for today. So the next asset on our watch list for today is my favorite and that is the XAUSD popularly known as the gold spot and on the gold spot we've been doing very well since the beginning of the week um, we've sold most of the part of this week we sold actually and we had this descending trend line which has supported the bearish buyers we had this week and we agreed here at the beginning of the week that as long as price remains below the descending trend line, we shall continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of selling this asset. Now, in addition to that trend line was this range here where price was confined within the $1,848.50 level and the $1,839.50 level to emphasize that choppy scenario we saw at the beginning of the week. And of course, because of the trend line 
and the way price action was playing out on the higher time frame if you remember we positioned ourselves just right below the support line here at the $1,839.50 level to capitalize on that downtrend move and we wrote that move all the way into the $1,817.50 level and also remember we had a couple of more positions added had the breakdown of the $1,831 and of course the $1,825 giving us a total of let's see for the first position we had about 200 pips running second position we had it at about 130 pips then third position we had about um, 70 pips roughly about 400 pips during the first couple of days of this week which is not bad at all for us all and congratulations to everyone who was part of this profitable journey however during our live session yesterday we begin to notice an interesting transition in price action in this market has we noticed that in the last 24 to 36 hours price has been consolidating in fact trapped within a range between the 1825 and the $1,817.50 level to emphasize the level of indecision here and in fact we saw this range expand a little further to capture the 1831 level here now it is quite clear that since um, Tuesday's trading session, the market has been consolidating, further emphasizing the level of indecision. And whenever we notice this kind of indecisive phase, it's more like majority in the major key players in the market are stepping aside, waiting for a catalyst to give clues into what to do next. And remember, we are looking forward to the non-farm payroll, which is coming up much more tomorrow where I'm of the opinion that a significant move will start showing up then. But while we wait for the NFP data, what is it that we are going to be looking at today? Now, remember during our live session yesterday, we acknowledged that a breakout of this descending trend line will be inciting buying opportunity. And since yesterday, we have been in a buy position after price broke out of the structure. Remember, I also mentioned that for those who missed out on the breakout of the descending trend line, that we should exercise patience as there are chances that price could come back and retest that structure to incite an uptrend move. And this was exactly what happened. As you saw, price came back to retest the trend line or that zone there around the 1817 to push price upward. Then since yesterday we're still in the buy position, price hasn't really moved that much as currently we have about how many pips running in profit, about 23 pips in profit which is not that much at all. And remember that our stop loss is way below the $1,817.50 level which is dovetailing to about 50 pips thereabout so that we can have enough room for this old choppy situation to happen in in line in, in anticipation of that uptrend move so in this case scenario here i'm still of the opinion that buyers are still trying to gain some momentum in this particular market now the challenges despite the challenges our strategic buy position still holds its ground so we are closely monitoring the market dynamics preparing ourselves for potential shift now at this point in time let's hold on to a bullish bias here let's remain bullish and if price continues to climb high i want to be looking out for more buying opportunities above the 1831 level which of course would have taken price action out of this range and of course taking out all the sell positions around this area to further emphasize the strength of the bias here so we look out for more buying opportunities above However, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunities in this market, we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers. Remember, since last week we had a strong bearish momentum to the downside, which thank goodness we were able to take advantage of. And if you look at what is going on here, since Tuesday we saw how this level had been negating all attend by the sellers to break through the structure. Now, if we are going to be selling the XEUS today, we want to see price take out all the buy positions along the 
$817.50 level before I can start considering selling. So I want to see a breakout, retest of structure, then I want to be joining that bearish move to the downside. So this is the only condition that will make us want to consider selling the XAUUSD for today. So let's mark out this level, especially the $1,817.50 level, a breakdown retest of the structure should welcome selling opportunity. And as long as price remains above the $1,821.50 level, we'll feel comfortable in our buy positions while we look out for more opportunities at the breakout of the $1,831 level. So these are my views here on the XAU USD for today. In fact, I think I want to make some readjustment to the $1,831.50 level. So if we readjust this, I think it just looks a little bit much better. And that is the $1,829 instead, which captures the range. So I will just readjust this figure to $1,829 dollar 50 cent level so let's see how the market will play out here so we are looking forward to the breakout of the 1821 instead and if price continues to the upside we have the 1839 dollar 50 cent level to maximize the potential of that bullish move so on the xaus today we remain bullish so let's hold on to our bullish momentum and looking out for more opportunities at the breakout of the resistant line so that is my view here, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to wait for your comments, and you can use that time to mark out those levels on your chat as we will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions. All right, all right, everyone. Um, it has been a wonderful moment out here with you guys. I see your comment 230. You're seeking help. Of course, this is what we've been doing here, trying to help ourselves to strategically position ourselves for the New York session. I do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here today. Um, Today, we were able to attend to four major assets, which is the asset we've been monitoring since the beginning of the week, and we've been doing pretty well across board. We were able to identify and strategically position ourselves ahead of the New York session today using simple parameters such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to gain valuable insight into the historical, historical price movement, and then position ourselves using the structures for today's trading session. So I do hope we all had a wonderful moment out here. And for those who are joining us for the first time, I hope you are able to gain one or two things. I encourage you to be part of our subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us, the better you get in understanding how this works and eventually be able to use the information you gather here to make your own independent trading decisions. So once again, I welcome you on the board and I look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time as we continue to monitor price action. Do have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>